So once we've completed our virtual tooth setup, we could go ahead and click on continue to edit steps. So this panel, like our other panels, have the option to view the maxilla, the mandible, or we could have show opposing arch selected that shows us both at the same time. We could activate the visibility of collisions, IPR, uh, the spacing between the teeth, and we could also click initial position to bring up the initial model positioning. What we also have here is a slider that shows us the various steps. So actually, as we go through the steps, we see the teeth move at each step. How are the steps created? The software looks at the maximum tooth movement limits that we showed previously. It also takes in con into consideration if we chose monthly, bi-weekly, or weekly. And then based on that, it calculates the number of steps that it needs to get the teeth from the initial positioning to the final positioning. Bi-weekly, of course, will have more steps than monthly will. Each aligner, each model, will have smaller amount of movement from step to step. But overall, the number of models or the number of aligners uh, will have increased. Now we have the ability to modify the computation that the software did when creating the steps. Let's say in a situation where you see that as you go through the steps, the uh, IPR increases or the teeth collide and you want to rectify that. So you have a couple of different ways of doing that. First of all, at any given step, you could go ahead and click on a tooth, you could activate it and you can move it. So in step number 15, for example, if you want the tooth to be in a different position, then at step 15, as you see the different uh, tooth movement, you could just go ahead and reposition the tooth at that step. And other options that we have is we could define the start step. So if we've clicked on a particular tooth, and now we're looking at tooth number 24 that we see here on the right hand side, and we want to make sure that tooth 24 starts moving early or starts moving later in the process, you could check the checkbox for start step and it will force the tooth to start moving at the designated step. Same thing with the mandatory column. If you want to make sure that a tooth is moving at earlier steps, for example, you could check the checkboxes for that tooth in the mandatory column and the software will recalculate. So once you've made your modifications, you need to click the refresh steps button because if you force the tooth to be in a position at a particular step or you forced it to start moving or to continue moving at particular steps, then the software will recalculate the number of steps and it will update the list that we have. At any given step, you could highlight the step and then click Step Details and it brings up on the screen all the movements for any tooth during that step. So it shows you all of that data. We have also added in a feature to export a video of the tooth movements. So if you click on the Export Video button, then the software will run through and process the different steps. And then it will bring up the ability to add in custom text onto the video. So you could, if you don't want custom text, you could just click, you could just click OK. And if you do want custom text, you could put in whatever text. You could set the size, bold, italic, underline, and click OK. You then have the option of choosing if you want to export it as an AVI file, which is which is a video file, or if you want to export it as a GIF, you could choose the data type you want, where you're going to save it on your computer, and then click the Save button. Okay, now we have several options in terms of how we want to proceed. If at this point of time we just want to export the models so that we could print the models and then create the liners physically based on the printed models, we just click No Attachments and continue to export. We have other options as well. We have the option of Add Buttons. If you want to add buttons to increase to increase the strength of the connection between the liner and the model or with the teeth, then you would click Add Buttons, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. We also have Add Brackets in a situation where you're going to be creating an indirect bonding tray. If you're going to be creating an IBT, then you would use the Add Brackets option. We also have Design Aligners, which actually allows you to design 
the liners in the software and they could be exported as STL files. So once there's the relevant printing material, then we could actually have the ability to print the liners directly. Right now we're gonna click add buttons and we're gonna going to continue to add some buttons.